Back here with the uh, expansion on the longer Ray 5 of now I'm doing what I had kind of talked about in the first video when I put the expansion kit together. It's coming up with a drag chain system. And I started doing this just to work it out and I thought, well, maybe I'll put uh, a little bit of this on video. You can kind of get an idea of how I'm doing this. Uh, I'll get you in close here, kind of show you how this stuff goes together or what I'm using. Okay, here on the x-axis, I started out with a uh, 10 millimeter wide chain and then I figured out it wasn't wide enough to do the air assist hose along with it. So I went with a 20 millimeter wide chain. That's what's on here now. Now to mount this at this end down here, I used one of these uh, 3D printed brackets. It's actually actually made for the uh, Atom Stack A5, but works on here. Works. It'll snap on just about any stepper motor. And then at the other end, to uh, have something to mount the other end of the track to, this is also a part that uh, for the Atom Stack A5 or, or other Atom Stack uh, lasers. And what this is is. Uh, I had to do some custom drilling on it and everything, but it works. Then this, uh, the end bracket, then mounts to this. So I had looked at doing this a couple different ways. This is the only way I can do it without trying having to lengthen the cable. The cable just makes it this way. And if you've never used uh, one of these drag chains before, uh, the type I buy, and I'll put a link in the description of where I get it. It's, it's an Amazon thing. Uh, they got these little hinges here that are little things that snap open. You need a little screwdriver to do it with. And after you get your uh, cable and hose in it, it's just a matter of going down the line and snapping all those back shut. And I have a lot of these I haven't snapped all the way yet because it was still in the trial mode. But now I can snap them. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's a definite snap. If you don't hear that snap, then it's not closed all the way. I'll get these all snapped shut and I'll kind of show you how this works here. Okay, as I mentioned, uh, I wanted to run this chain a different way, but then I would have to make cables longer. And while I could theoretically do that, I don't want to. So I know this is going to look strange, but it works. So as this, uh, it's all the way extended now, all the way to the right on the x-axis. As this comes back, the chain will actually go up in the air. And I'm not going to be putting this in enclosure, so that doesn't make any difference. So when it gets all the way back home, the chain is literally straight up in the air. Kind of give you a better view of that. So, yeah, looks a little strange, but hey, it works. So that as this travels back, it just lays back down. What I originally wanted was for, as this comes back this way, for the chain to just roll out on the other end. That didn't work. I'd have to make cable longer. So I had another idea of, of having this kind of flipped over and having it roll up as it comes back cables are long enough, but this way the cable's long enough. So now I have to figure out how I'm going to do this on the y-axis. Okay, so my idea here on the y-axis, I turned the laser around so I could get this right close to me to work on it. Uh, front corners over here, there's the controller. So I've got this all the way to the back. So my theory here is to mount the drag chain to the bottom of this stepper motor. And I'm going to have to extend this chain a little bit. I have some more links. And I'll mount this end down here some way or another so that when this comes back, the chain will roll along like this. I think the cable's long enough to do it. So I just got to get this worked out. Well, after a whole bunch of messing around and trying different things, I've, I've got this, at least uh, in a workable fashion. My x-axis, I, I did change that, so now instead of going up and down, it's going to wrap around itself over here. I could, there's no way for me to get this to be able to lay flat and roll up 
uh, because of a couple things. One is that my cable length is long enough. The other one is that as it gets back this way, it would sag down onto the work. And there's no, well, I shouldn't say there's no way to put a track on there for it to lay on, but it would be quite a bit of fabrication and I don't feel that's necessary. This will work, I'll get you in closer, I'll show you how this is all working out now. So what I did was I uh, took this apart right here and turned the stepper motor so that the plug was facing down. Uh, normally it faces out this way. Uh, but I needed to mount my drag chain there and it's mounted on a horizontal here so that when it comes back we'll push out that way but still stay out of the work. So when it comes home um, everything clears. I have no interference or anything. And I probably could have made that chain one length shorter. But I didn't want to take it apart again. I had this apart many times already. Now I'll take you over on the Y axis. The Y axis is a little bit more straightforward and easy. Again, I used one of my uh, little stepper motor clamps to mount my drag chain to. It mounts on the bottom down here facing that way, and I used a little 3D printed bracket here to uh, mount the other bracket to. So this will, I can do this without scooching the laser. So since this here will be laying on the baseboard that I'm putting under this, uh, it's not an issue that uh, it would sag or anything. For example, if I uh, bring this back here, if I would have done the same thing on my x-axis, the problem is, I'm going to lift the frame up so you can see what happens, is this just hangs down and it, hangs, it would hang down to the point where it would touch the work. So that wasn't a workable thing there. But looks a little funky, but it'll work. So next I need to get some material for a baseboard. I haven't decided if we're going to use MDF or half inch MDF or half inch plywood. Uh, this being this big, it's going to be almost four foot square. Um, I'm afraid that MDF, it, it tends to warp pretty easy, whereas if you get a good grade cabinet plywood, it won't. Uh, Again, I haven't quite decided yet. I'll have to uh, see what I got in my pile over there. I see if I don't want three quarter, I'd make it too heavy. But I'll have to see what I got over there and come up with some kind of plan. And then I need to uh, design a grid for this. I also need to uh, turn this around, hook it up, and make sure everything moves smoothly now that I had messed with everything. So maybe I'll do that first. Well, at least it's homing correctly, I hope. Let's me uh, take a look at my drag chain there. And something's not right. I had to make a limit switch adjustment on the x-axis there. I think I must have bumped it or moved it or something. Sure, was some way I could better support that, but there just isn't. And they are at two different planes, so I guess they're not going to be perfectly level. I'm going to frame a little grid out here. Check some of my lines. See, the one thing I'm going to have to watch, because the drag chain goes out that way, I'm going to have to watch, if I'm going to the full extent, about what's on the other side. Right now there's uh, Ortur laser in, a, in an enclosure back there, and the Chain got really close to it. Didn't hit it, but it got very, very close. So that's something I have to keep in mind. Well, at high speed, that is at uh, 8,000 millimeters per minute, I'm getting, getting wavy lines on my x-axis. I've slowed this down to 1,000 millimeters per minute. I think I may have a bearing going bad over there on that x-axis carriage. Which one, I don't know. I just may go ahead and replace all three of them. Uh, I did check the eccentric is set correctly and the only other thing that can cause that is uh, a bad wheel. But the drag chains are working out well. 
doing what they're supposed to do. Okay, so slowing it down eliminated the wavy lines, but I am certain there's a bad bearing in there. As I'm looking at the uh, one I did here at the higher speed, this waviness is in exactly the same spot on every line. So I've got them here, and then I've got them, it repeats again over here. So there's either that or I have a wheel with a flat spot on it. I think I may just go ahead and change all three of them, although that's kind of a pain to do. And looking at the uh, one I just did on the slower speed, and this is something you can do too if you're, you're getting w wiggle lines or wavy lines or maybe you have something repeating. Uh, I'm almost certain it's a bearing because uh, running at this slow speed, everything is good and straight. I don't have any waves in it. Uh, like in my smallest circle here, that's perfectly round, but on the this one here, there's a wave in it there and there and here and here, so it's they're appearing in the same place. So I'm almost certain that there is a bad bearing in there, so I'm going to be replacing those. Okay, got a baseboard on here. I elected to go with half-inch plywood instead of the MDF because it's lighter and this is uh, 42 by 46. That's what I cut this at. And I use the same mounts I used before with my uh, when I had it on the smaller baseboard. Um, I don't have an enclosure for this, of course. And I am in engraving the uh, layout grid. It's 800 by 800. And I'll, of course, you'll see it when it's done. This uh, over an hour to engrave this. Uh, give you an idea of the settings: uh, 20 watt laser on half inch plywood. Uh, for the first set of lines, I'm doing 3,000 millimeters per minute. 50% power, two passes. For the uh, darker lines that will appear on here, I'm using 3,000 millimeters per minute, 50% power, three passes. And then the uh, numbers is, uh, is a fill. That's at 2,000 millimeters per minute, 50% power, one pass. So this is uh, going well. It's gonna get a little smoky in here. I do have my uh, exhaust fan on and the hose kind of pointed towards the uh, laser bed down here to, and it's pulling out most of the smoke but not all of it so I, I know it's going to get a little bit foggy in here. Drag chains are working as they should. Uh, everything looks good so far. I did make the wood a little bit wider on this side for the uh, drag chain to lay on. Of course I don't have a track for the uh, x-axis chain but it seems to be doing fine out there where it is. Just looks a little odd. So when all is said and done, this is going to make a nice big work area. I have a project coming up this spring with some large signs. That's why I am uh, putting an extension kit on this laser. And it's going to be pretty much dedicated to just big things after this because this is going to be kind of a bear to move around. But I have some uh, fairly large signs I need to make come spring. And I won't have to do it in two parts. I can do it all at once. I just took a look here, the uh, total engrave time on this grid, is because it's so large, is uh, an hour and 55 minutes.
800 by 800 red two hours later. Yeah, it's just a little bit foggy in here, but uh, I had the fan running and it got most of it. Uh, so there's the uh, baseboard, the mounts, the grid for this uh, extension kit for the Long Array 5. There'll be a link in the description if you'd like to get a copy of this grid, if you have one of these big extension kits, I'd like to do this grid. There's no charge for it. It'll be a free download from our website. I'll also put a link in the description for a longer Ray 5 laser, of course, and a link to the extension kit and a link to these mounting blocks. And you can also put risers on these. Uh, I've done these in my previous videos. It's something we 3D print and make here. Uh, there'll be a link in the description on where you can get a either the base mounts or the 25 millimeter riser or the 50 millimeter riser are all set and you can keep stacking within reason so we got anything out of this appreciate getting a thumbs up always helps the channel roger in the shop and man is it late i'm usually not out here this late thanks for watching see you in the next one